Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that all of you enjoyed my last video so much and that you're all really big fans of watching me put shit on my face because why not? But unfortunately, I don't even know if you can see this, I have ripped about eight layers of skin off both my eyelids. So I'm going to have to take a break from beautifying myself for a little while. Um, so yeah, this is the face you're going to have to look at until my skin grows back or someone gives me a skin graft. So any fans out there, if you want to be a little part of me, or wait, have a little part of you, be a little part of me, go ahead and send me your skin. I'm rapping just to stay relevant, guys. A Pitch Perfect 3 plot synopsis. Being that I am a super professional uh, YouTuber, I don't know how to, uh, to do things. So I'm going to do my best. This is not what I would have wanted to deliver to you guys. I had grandiose ideas with wigs and choreography, but instead I think I will be giving you a bit of a rundown from here on my floor of my bedroom, which is away from my children. I'm going to put my hair up. Now, I know you are all thinking that I will probably be doing this uh, synopsis from the point of view of Fat Amy, because, the, but I'm not Australian. I'm not overly blonde. And I just don't think I have what it takes to be her. Now, mind you, I definitely don't have what it takes to be anyone else in the movie. Although me and Haley are basically sisters. So I went and saw this movie last night. You've probably heard of it. You've probably seen the first two. If you haven't, I don't know why you clicked on this video at all. Other than to see my dazzling face. And for that, I thank you. Before we get into the video. If you'd like to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, these things help me to make more important content for you. I'll be doing a little bit of acting and a little bit of singing. I should, I put a disclaimer. Spoiler alerts. I'm going to give you the whole plot. I'm going to tell you what's happening. I'm going to tell you how it ends. I'm going to tell you everything. I mean, you're going to be so entertained. You're not even going to have to go see this movie. You're going to feel like you were there. Boom. Nada. Done. Did it. Let's get her going. Okay. So they open up on a scene. They're on a boat. They jump in the water. There's an explosion. Blah, south of France. Blah. The taste of your lips. I'm wondering. And then they go. Three weeks. Prior. But Becca is some sort of music exec. She is a producer. She's got some kid who, by the way, is the kid from Hannah Montana. You know the little kid, Rico? Is it Rico? Rico's? He's him, but he he's he's the he's a rapper now. He's got like a grill uh, all up in his grill. And anyway, she has produced his music and it's sounding fabulific. And he doesn't like it. He's like, nah, this is not my sound. And basically there's a disagreement and Becca quits. She quits her job. She goes home where she apparently shares some sort of bachelor apartment with Fat Amy and Chloe. And they all are getting pumped and excited to go to the Barton Bellas reunion. So they all meet up. All the friends are there. They're like, we're going to sing. Oh my God, what are we going to sing with our girls? They're so excited. In runs little Emily, my little sister, Haley Steinfeld. And she's like, oh my God, thanks for coming to see us, guys. Like, we love you and just enjoy this performance we're going to do because you guys are kind of old and have lives. You shouldn't want to sing with your college friends anymore. But they do because their lives are sad. This is the real moral here, people. You will be in your late 20s and your life will be sad. And Emily and her friends are like, sit still, look pretty. Barton Bellas of the past go out to have a drink and they cry and they're sad. And Emily joins them 
And Aubrey starts talking about how her dad has a connection with the USO. They're like, woo, yeah, let's do it. We're going to go perform at the USO for the soldiers and uh, DJ Khaled. You know, he wants someone to do an opening act for his special. So whoever wins gets to do that. So they're like, yes, we're back in the game. They go and they get there at the base, first base. They never do get to second base, you know? And I think there's three or four other bands they're going to be, like, competing with. And they decide to do a riff-off. I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. It's the remix to Ignition. Hot and fresh out the kitchen. On that, your mom is something. Any man in here wishing. I want to fly away. If I were a boy. Even just for a day. Zombie. Yay. Yay. So they're doing this riff off with the bands. And uh, the bands are all kind of better than them. They go compete. They're singing their song. Taps comes on. They completely embarrass themselves. They like are singing. They're saluting. They don't even know what they're supposed to be doing. It's a disaster. It's terrible. Everyone thinks they're a joke. I don't even remember where they are. Spain? They're going to go across to the hotel where DJ Khaled is. They're going to impress him. They're ready to do it. They're down for it. Boom. They get tarted up which apparently is very trendy slang for get slutty. And Fat Amy finds her dad. He is a criminal of sorts, so he's trying to make amends, but she's just not sure. They decide that he's going to watch some more of her performances and they're going to be friends. The Bellas have gone upstairs to meet DJ Khaled. Their producer or his producer or some man in his life that is important to his establishment, takes Becca aside and puts her on um, a sound mix board microphone situation. She's tearing it up. She's loving it. Whatever. The Bellas, unfortunately, get into a bit of a scuffle. They light something on fire and bees are everywhere. They break windows, the whole place up in flames. It's just a disaster. And at that point, DJ Khaled walks in and he is not impressed by them. So basically they go on. They, I think, go to Italy and they go somewhere else. They're doing much better performances and they get to the south of France. They are waiting to find out who's going to open for DJ Khaled the next day. DJ Khaled's little buddy man, um, whose name escapes me, he approaches back up, so they go to chat with DJ Khaled, and the rest of the girls are like, oh my god, this must be it. Like, they're gonna tell us that, like, we're opening. Like, we're so pumped. We're so excited. So they're having some drinks. They're chilling out. Becca and the dude, I can't remember his name. I'm so good at this. You guys, do you feel like you were there? Do you feel like you saw it in person? DJ Khaled and the dude tell Becca that she's chosen. Not the Bellas. They want to sign her. They want her to open for him. It's a done deal. And she's like, no, they're my family. I can't do this to them. I, I only want the girls or nothing at all. It's got to be this way. And they're like, well, we think you should think it over. This is a big opportunity for you. These girls are nice, but this is like life changing, life changing decisions. And she's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll think about it or whatever. Well, this is going on. Amy is walking around the south of France, uh, evidently looking for her father. He finds her. They're like, oh, yay, because she sees his yacht. He has, like, this massive yacht. So she's like, oh, it's Dad. Oh, I love you. Then he's like, let's go to the Cayman Islands. And she's like, I know why you want to go to the Cayman Islands, because that's where Mom put my secret bank account. You just want money from me. He basically then threatens her life that if she doesn't come to the Caymans with him, He's gonna just kill her. He's gonna, like, take everything she loves. Apparently she has $108 million or something. 108 or 180. Numbers are not easy. So, in lieu of her going, because she said no and she's not gonna do it, he calls her and he's like, I have your friends. He's kidnapped them. Cake by the ocean. Talk to me, baby. Uh-oh. They're singing in the back of this van. They're being kidnapped. They don't even know it. You're like, girls, you are so dumb. We just got into a van with a stranger. And Amy's dad's all like, boom, I got your bitches. And she's like, I will find you and I will kill you. 
And he's like, bring it. So she takes Becca and they go to save the Bellas. They're out there uh, trying to distract him. From the taste of your lips, I'm wondering. Your toxic gum slipping under the taste of your poison paradise. I don't know the words. But the girls do a distraction dance. And basically, Amy knocks the shit out of everybody, makes a bomb, sets everything on fire, and she crashes through the ceiling, and we're right back to the beginning of the movie. Um, her and Becca are the last to jump off the boat. Boom! The lifeboat! She hits the lifeboat with a splash. Bang, boom, whatever. Not a splash. She hits the, like a sack of potatoes. Becca's decided. All the girls cry about it and tell her, oh, we love you, we want the best for you. And she's like, I can't do this without you. And they're like, yes, you can, and you should. And so she starts her performance and she's got a foot pedal and she's doing some singing. She's setting her own beat. She's being her own acapella group. Okay. She's doing it all. She's like, I never needed you guys. Boom. And you're watching her succeed and it's beautiful and you're loving it. And then she comes down into the crowd and she gets her ladies and she pulls them all up onto the stage and they do it together. And Chloe makes out with the dude from the base. Uh, Aubrey's dad shows up. He saw her perform. Her light is lit up. I never mentioned at the beginning, but Jesse and Becca are not together. So her and DJ Khaled's little right-hand man seem to have a flirtation kind of happening. So that's looking like it's going to happen. Oh my god, the worst part of the whole movie. The, the girl who never talks. Somewhere in the conversation, and she starts talking so big, she's like, oh, the devil has left my body. Nothing worse in the entire movie than that moment. I was like, no, you've ruined it. Everyone is finding love. Chloe also got into vet school. I don't know all their names. Stacy had a baby. She named her Bella. Ashley and Jessica are not dead, which is essential to their lives. And that is all. Thank you for watching. This is Jossie Potts saying, what the f did I just do? Love you all.